you know, most people, you know, the whole story with Huero Verde is a lot of people are confused about who made Huero Verde. Huero Verde was my cellmate. A lot of people can say, oh, Duty made him, so-and-so made him. No. Duty's, Huero, Huero's padrino is Roland from Watts and Chino from Maravilla, which is peanut butter. So this is the way it is. Huero was about to parole in 1997. He was in corporate shoe. He was about to parole. When he came, and sheriffs got him. Well, the sheriffs picked him up from San Bernardino County. He went down to San Bernardino County, and he was fighting a bunch of robberies that he had did before he went to prison. So while he was in the county jail, the carnal peanut butter, which is Chino from Maravilla, was coming down to parole, to court, to go to parole, and, and he landed and he landed in a Chino State Prison. But when he landed in Chino State Prison, Chino hadn't got high in a while, so the homie shot him a pedazo. Well, not even a pedazo, a little, just, you know, 28 grams. Chino from Maravilla overdosed, so when the Judas found him in his cell laying down, they picked him up, gave him a new charge, and he never got out. He went straight to San Bernardino County, and they picked up a new case on him. So now he's in San Bernardino County, and he runs into Huero. They're both in high power to get him in the hole. They got him. So while they're there, there was an Africano there talking to peanut butter and disrespecting the M.A. He disrespected peanut butter real bad on the tier. And at the time, Huero, you know, he's fighting life. So he's, you know, you, when you're fighting life and you get the I don't give so what Huero did was um, Huero hid in the shower and right there in, in, in the hole and, and, and hid in the shower and while he hid in the shower he had a fierro and when that negro when he came out for shower he, they both seen each other and they both ran to each other and they started going at it with knives both of them had terrazos Huero and Africano so when they were going at it you know boom that happened so now um, peanut butter gets transferred back to um, the feds he goes to Victorville out to court to that federal building right there and he talks to the other carnales which was a uh, Wedo Sharn, Wedo Shy, and uh, a Roland from Watts, Mondo, Mondo from Hard Times, Orange County. Um, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Spanky from Huntington Park. These are all the carnales that were there, so they talked to him, and, and, and Peanut Butter happens to mention, hey, I just happened to leave a uh, um, county jail in San Bernardino, and, there, and some camarada named Wedo from Verdugo, Little Count, helped me out, and he took one of the Africano for me. So the brothers were like, what are they? So then at this time, Widow gets in. while well, he's in the county jail. He lands in Corcoran Shoe, and here comes the homie from Watts. And, and Roland from Watts says, hey, are you the same Widow that was in the San Bernardino with peanut butter? And he says, Simon. So when the situation happened, when they said, okay, well, we're going to make two, we're gonna make some guys here. So when they said, we're going to make, we want to make somebody, they, need, they needed fresh blood is what they called it in Corcoran. Because at the time, the carnales that were housed there was a, uh, was uh, Artie from King Cobra, Fox from South Flows, Artie, I mean, um, Mike Booth from Norwalk, um, South, Diaz, South Diaz from Logan, uh, Jacko from Azusa, you know, Duty from... You have 60 seconds yeah, so remaining. So Roland from Watts gets to, gets to Cork and he tells Wedo from Verdugo, hey, you're the same one? He says, yes. So they said, okay, well, we're going to make fresh blood. So Roland says, hey... He tells he circulates Wedo's name to all the brothers that I mentioned right there in Corcoran, and he tells them, hey, I want to make uh, this the homie right here, Wedo, man. He showed heart. So they were like, ah. They were like, nah, nah. So they, they said no. Well, at the same time, Wedo's brother drives up, which is Rojo, you know, from Verdugo, which is from the Royal Counts. And uh, his brother Rojo, Wedo's brother, had just checked in, a, you know, a couple years back at the time. And uh, so Wedo... Being who it was, he tells Roland from Watts, hey, um, I'm going to do whatever I can to set up with my brother, and I'm going to try to get him. And the brothers were like, huh, all right, okay. So one thing led to another. They said, all right. Um, Roland tells Fox, hey, I want to make Wedo. So Fox, at the time, Fox had a cellmate named um, Rascal from Calexico, Alfredo Suarez. So he tells him, hey, if you want to make Wedo, I want to make my celly. And then uh, the brothers were like, man, we don't want to make Rascal. But then he said, well, this is what it takes for me to get your vote. I'm going to, I'll, 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 you got my okay on Rascal. So they said, okay. So they circulated the names. And when Wedo said, hey, and I, when I talked to Wedo about it, I said, hey, you might want to be more careful because Gangster from Avenidas, at the time, Gangster was in bad standing, but he's a good homie. He still is. But, you know, he's in bad standing with them. And Gangster was a carnal too, and he got stripped. So I tell Wedo, hey, fool. If I were you, I would tell them to to not try to make you until you get a pool from the bay because look what gang. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. So I tell them, look what gangsters from avenues went through. They made them, and then all of a sudden people disagreed with the situation. You know, for other reasons, not just.
because they didn't want to make him a brother. There's a lot of politics behind it, but so he goes, all right. So he tells Roland, hey, but make sure that when I'm in, I'm in. Not they're gonna some are gonna say yes, and then like in a, a month from now they're gonna say no. So so at the time, Roland and them go to the bay, and Roland told them, hey, be on the lookout. I'm gonna shoot word to you once we get for sure, you know. But you're in. So Roland shoots word, and uh, um, they say September 16th, they shot word, and uh, Rasco and they shot word, and they said, yeah, Rasco and Wero from Verdugo, they just got made. And uh, they made them, and, and, and they made them a brother. So I remember we go to yard. I remember going to yard the next day, we were, you know, when we got word, and I wanted to be a chismoso, a little fly on the wall. I was like, Mom, see what's going on here, right? So when we go out to the yard, I want to see, like, what are the reglas they're going to do? And Duri, Duri comes out, and um, he tells, he tells uh, Wero, hey, uh, you know, just so you're aware, uh, you know, with the brothers, uh, there's a lot of tension between me and the brothers, and this is Duty talking, and uh, he's talking about uh, how he got caught up in a situation where he had to get a theater from uh, from avenues at the time was in bad standing, so Duty was the one that was supposed to handle him, and Duty was saying, yeah, a lot of brothers are, are upset over me, not, uh, you know, taking care of Tigre, so you're going to hear a lot of things about me, and uh, it's not true, it is true, and... And I'm listening to this guy like, what the hell is he talking about? Like, he's, he's, he's admitting, you know, that there's a lot of politics in between the clique that people don't know about, you know, like there's a lot of inner inner dramas. And, you know, that's basically what I heard when when Weno got made. I thought they were going to give him some reglas and be some high power story. They're going to give him rule one to ten. They didn't. And it was more like, a, hey, just so you know, I got issues. And I'm like, God damn, you know. But, uh, no, yeah. I'm, Wero Wero got made. His padrino was Roland from Watts and uh, Chino from Maravilla, and and Duty was a third sponsor because you need three sponsors to to be a brother. And uh, that's the way it worked out for Wero. Man, they they made him. And at the time, his name was is not Wero Verde. It was Wero Easy because Wero had used to every time he would speak, he would always say Easy. So that's a Carnales to call him Wero Easy, but uh, they call him Wero Verde because Verdugo was known as La Verde back you know back in the days. So that's how come they made they, they made. They give him that name, Huero Verde. But uh, no, that's pretty much how how how, how simple it was. What well, wasn't simple? Because you know he went through what he had to get through to get where he was at. But uh, that's why he got became a carrera. What what did you notice change about him and his responsibilities? And did you automatically elevate your status just for being his cellmate? Did you get more okay. responsibility? Okay. Well, this is the way it played out for me. Like. Okay, well, like I mentioned before, my past interviews when I got to Corcoran, she had I had a green light myself. I was off program. I was giving the coach order, and that's a feeling because if you're in prison and you got life, the last thing you want to do is get shunned by the people you were willing to die or kill for. And that's how I felt. Like man, they gave me the coach order. So when I fixed my situation, I always did my best to help people out, and I would tell tell people like, hey, don't kick a man while he's down. So when <clears throat> when Wedo got made. I was at the time I was already being duty secretary. You know, for those who were that were in Corcoran, they would know that I was duty secretary at the time. My code name was Chaleco and Cinco. Cinco was one of my code names at the time. And uh, so when uh, when all that was going on, I already had a responsibility for duty. So when Wero got made, the risk between me and duty was sneaky works for me. And I was like, haha, man, this is my celly. But look, so when Wero when Wero got made, duty said, look. For one year, Wedo, it would be wise that you stay off the politics because if your name goes 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 too far, too fast, people are going to start hating. The brothers are going to start being envious. They're going to say, who is this guy? Why is he stepping on my toes? Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? So and it was just true. It makes sense. So what we did was, so <clears throat> what we did was I said, hey, we're going to kick, well, there's corporate, we're in corporate shoes. So corporate at the time had 3A and 3B, which was two level four main lines. And then we had Sat S, which was a 180 and a bunch of level twos. So we shot war to these yards. And at the time, our first worker on 3B was Malo from Temple Street, who passed away during the hunger strike, Chris Gomez. And the second one was a criminal from um, Westside Longo on 3B. On 3A, we had Looney from Santa Maria and Stranger from Las Tres Palmas. And in, and in Sat S C facility, I had a... I had Grande from uh, we had Grande from Riverside and uh, Ralphie Boy from Verdugo and Snoopy from Verdugo Little Count. So when we when I reached out to these guys, we said, "Hey, Wero's a new carnal," and they knew who I was already because, like I said, I was already communicating to these yards on behalf of Duty. So I, I wrote them and I said, "Hey, check it out, Wero's a carnal." So look at 
stay on these yards. I mean, like, in other words, don't branch out. We're just going to keep it in, in Corcoran because the Carnal is our house here. And uh, all the money that, that you're making for on behalf of Wedo, send it, send it to me, or Wedo. And same with the drugs or cell phones or whatever illicit activities you guys can come up with. Send them our way. Cool. So as time went on, duty was like, hey, you're branching out too much. You're making too much money. And at the same time, people get transferred. We can't control where CDC moves inmates. Unfortunately, one of our boys that got moved to High Desert, one of our other boys got moved to Pelican Bay Mainline, Kern Valley Mainline, you know, fucking uh, Calipatria, Centenera, Lancaster, and so on. So now our workers that we had assigned in these yards in Corcoran had just got transferred to other prisons. So as they're going, now they're, now, now there's headaches are coming because guys are saying, hey, your workers are coming to our yards and asking for a seat, but there's no seats open. And by seats, I mean there's a mess out with five different guys representing each carnal, and they're saying the seats are full, but somehow our workers are trying to bulldoze their way into being workers, which we prevent. We, we tell them that's a negative. You know, we don't, the last thing we want to do is cause, you know, ruffle feathers, you know. So we would tell the workers, like, hey, don't step on toes. And be treat people how you want to be treated, and that was why he told Wedo, look, "Look, man, I'm working for you, but you see what happened to me getting in politics when I had the yard in Kern Valley for Derko from Bassett, and I said I got caught up in a just situation. So therefore, let's do our best to help the Sureños not do it. So in my mind, I had this vision where I'm always going to try to do the right thing, even when nobody's looking, like as far as politics is concerned. So I would tell them, don't step on toes, don't get dirty politics. Let's not have people hit with down here in both sides of the story." That was always my thing, and anybody that knows me cannot say different because I would emphasize that let's hear both sides of the story. We have to be impartial. This way nobody can use that against us in the future. And by my mean them, I mean other brothers, and saying, hey, you're getting people stabbed for no reason. No, we're not. We're hearing both sides of the story because there's always going to be two sides of the story, and then there's a the truth, and that's to us to try to make, to see who's telling the truth and who's not. And that's one thing I would go out of my way for, and I would always hear both sides of the stories because that's what you have to do, man, to, to try to make this, you know, this world, you know, and prison a little better for everybody. And that's what we did, and uh, that's where the rift came between Duty and Wero, where Wero seen things one way, and Duty was like, no, stab him. So it was it always a trip about Duty because anytime somebody disrespected his workers or whatever, Duty was real quick to try to get them assaulted. And I would ask Tudi, like, hey, don't do that. that. That didn't work out like this. Your worker didn't, you know, like, didn't do this, didn't do this. And Tudi was like, no, 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 hit him, hit him, hit him, or tax him, or whatever. And Weddle was a little open-minded to that and saying, no, let's hear both sides of the stories. And and, and I, I guess to some degree, I would argue that Weddle was fair in that aspect. But again, that would, I mean, people have different perceptions of how they've seen it from their view, you know. But that's one thing I would emphasize is that, like I said, we were always fair. I know I was, you know, and, and, and I can speak for myself when I say us. And Beto listened to me for the most part, you know. He, he he always did. You know, we were down near, we were studying for so long, we were like brothers, you know. So he heard me out for everything I said, you know. And uh, and I would make sure, I would keep him in check, straight up. I mean, not like, I mean, like I, I, but I mean, I would be like, hey, I would pull his coattails. And he knew that, and he respected that, and he never, he never once changed never once changed on me. Like, I could talk to him the way I would talk to another Sureño, and he would not feel disrespected by it. Because he knew at the end of the day, just because God made, you didn't you didn't inherit some well of wisdom, you know? And, uh, no, rest is, God rest his soul, but I'm just saying, you know, it's like, it doesn't change, you know? So, yeah, he was pretty fair about it, man, and he never changed with me, you know? The only one that would change was, was Duty's view on things, you know? And uh, I didn't agree with a lot of things, you know? And uh, that's where our rift always came between me and him. Based off your observation, what was one of the hardest decisions or hardest situations that was presented to Wedo and you? Well, I guess, uh, I mean, we can say, I, can, I, can, I mean, there's different things. Like, there's one time where, like, for instance, there's a, there's, there's a whole situation that happened with Jack from Asusa when his um but his brother-in-law was sort of kidnapped by Perico from from the Carna the ex carnal Perico from Norwalk, and uh, the one the one that had something to do with Perico getting shot on the streets was shotgun from 18th Street, shotgun from 18th Street recruited some other guys from 18th Street to shoot shoot at um at, at a Perico. But when this happened, Jack checks in, you know, long story short, Jack checks in, 
and uh, um, Shotgun from 18th Street remained the shoe. Well, one day, Shotgun didn't, was very boisterous about duty. He didn't like duty. And again, Shotgun was just a sureño and duty is a carnal. But uh, one day, Shotgun disrespected duty, so duty writes me a wheel and says, hey, I need you can have uh, Shotgun killed. <laughs> and I look at Wero and I'm like, hey, here's the wheel on it. And then, and then Wero goes, well, get at his celly. And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, I'm like, yeah, how, how am I supposed to do this? So I'm like, all right, so I get a cheese bus from Linwood Segundo, which was shotgun send at the time, and I say, hey, hey, homie, uh, I, um, the carnales, I just told him straight up, hey, the carnales have me to get at you, homie, and let you know that uh, your celly has to go, homie, um, what do you want to do? And, and he said, manda fierro. But again, uh, uh, we didn't agree with it because we knew that Duty was doing some underground thing because there was no link at the time to... to put Shotgun being responsible for helping Jack do this to, at the time, who was a Carnaz Perico from Noah. And I told Turi, like, hey, homie, are, are you sure? And he says, yes. And then, so, I mean, there's only so much you can argue to a brother. And I mean, technically, the guys that did it were for me. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. All arrows pointed to Shotgun, you know, because that was, that was um, Jack's right hand at the time. And then, you know, a brother says, and then me and Wedo delegated on this all day, and it's like, all right. You have 60 seconds remaining. So here comes Palahara, and we tell Sh uh, Chief Paz to do it, and Chief Paz decides to roll it up, and turns in the fierro and tells the cops, and they single cell shotgun, and nothing ever came of this because, you know, but, but again, there was backlash behind it because, you know, there was never a proof about this saying that shotgun did it.